So we've arrived at Jury's Inn. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Already got people who don't want to be on camera. Iron Ram made you. Hi guys. Adam, little ones. So I'll let you know how we get on. So we're here. We're at the conference. We're setting up. It's all very exciting. I'll show you the kind of crowd we've got. The room is absolutely rama jamma ding dong. As you can probably see there is absolutely loads of people here. Far, far busier than I was expecting. Apparently we're opening the show, so to speak. There's going to be a compare, because it's a bit of an introduction. And then at seven o'clock we're on. And it's currently uh, something like quarter to seven. So, wow, we're up. Anthony's getting his presentation ready. It's all good. Very exciting stuff. Set up now. Check it out in here. It's absolutely balmy. Yeah, that's going to kick off in 10 minutes. Gary's going to open the show. There's Dave having a muster. We're going to get a pint. That's what we need. After a rather hectic traffic ridden journey into Birmingham. Nice scenery though. Pint and then we get started. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you to Iru. Um, he was there. Iru? Iru, Iru. He's from Argentina. He's an amazing man. I, I, honestly, I've got to say to you that you have to make a point of seeing this guy. Even if you have to knock on his room at 3 o'clock in the morning, his room... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, in a minute, I'm actually going to introduce our um, special speakers. They're actually here as our surprise guests, even though it's now not a surprise. Um, and they're going to talk about something that they've been working on for some time, which is actually new. So even though it's an, an addition to what you've already seen, what they're going to show you is, in my opinion, awesome stuff. Ask them, just mention it to them, and they'll make sure they airbrush you out. So uh, they, they've been to the NASA school of bullshit, so they, they're actually pretty good. But no, actually, the guys are good. Actually, I've been dealing with them. And, and actually, we've also got, um, oh, God. I do apologise from the Squire magazine, and I've gone up Mark Welding. Um, he's actually going to write a three and a half thousand word um, piece. And, and what I've said to Mark is all I ask is that you just tell the truth. How you see it is what you say. I didn't want it doctored, but he's actually here. He's put in some effort to actually make sure that he's trying to learn. He's, he's starting to Mark Sargent, he's spoken to other people. He is doing his homework, and I've got to be honest, I admire that. Wow. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Anthony. Uh, Nathan, sorry, and Anthony, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. The biggest thing I could find was 500 feet tall, Blackpool Tower. That's pretty much the biggest thing that I could find without going miles. So I thought, right, let's plug it into the curve calcs and see what, how far away I need to go before that thing disappears behind the so-called curve. How far do I have to go before that disappears? It's 518 feet tall. So when you're looking at the tip of the tower, the very tip of it below the flag point, 518 feet. And it goes right the way down to the floor for where the, where the, the customer entrance is. It's not the tower itself, it's the tower plus the ballroom below it stands at 518 feet. I learned that when all the bowlers started telling me I was lying. <laughs> I've got Mick West in the bottom left hand corner, I don't know if you can all see him, but Mick West is the guy from Metabunk, this little guy down here. He's the guy that created the website that they all cite from. I wanted to know where this, this reference came from that they all brought the site from, because it must be credible. And I found out that this guy, Mick West, he went to the same university that I went to in Manchester, but he now lives in America. That makes it a really small world. Because the guy that, it's my university and he's gone the same place. We know that you can make things look daylight just by long exposure at night time. So, uh, so ultimately, for me, it was like, well, let's go see what we can see. First time I went and said it, that's the tower that we got. 
Now obviously, if you look at how much is on show there, compared to how much is on show there, there's a significant difference. What's the cause? Is it bendy light? Maybe, not likely at night time, but who's gonna believe me? I've just come on the scene, it's my first go. Didn't know what to do. But what you can notice is that little, that little light down at the bottom left hand corner there is the love heart. It's lit up and it's, it's bright, it's really bright and it stands just above the ballroom, literally just above the ballroom. I won't go too much into it, but that ballroom there, that light at the, just above the ballroom told me that I'm seeing a lot more than what I should be seeing and it's not refraction, it's making it bend around the ball because there should be an obstruction in the way. Well, we're questioning that radius of the earth. Until they can prove it, why should we even give it them? It doesn't make that much difference, but it's, it's an adjustment mathematically that is based on absolutely nothing based other than assumption. Well, I don't want to give them an assumption. I want them to prove it. So until they prove it, they're not even having it. When we're testing our own evidence, we'll apply it because we want to see what they're going to come back with. But the real world is, there is no radius for them to base this on that they can prove. So we shouldn't be using that standard refraction nonsense. The seven six of the radius of the Earth is, is described as being um, a, a standard atmospheric condition. It never happens. They admit that it never happens, but how valuable is it if it never happens? It happens like one frame a day. What use is that to us? It's ridiculous. But they all use it, and they all have a bit, of math, a bit more maths on when they need to. But how real is it? How good is it if they can't even prove the radius in which it's based on in the first place? Next. Now this is the exclusive reveal. And I am massively, massively proud of this because the weather's getting better. It wasn't perfect conditions for me. It wasn't great visibility. It wasn't even, it wasn't even good for me to get. It was hard. I lay on my belly on the beach when the side had gone out and the water around them where the sand is now, the water was there 20 minutes ago and I'm now laying on that wet sand and I'm walking the docks as well at the same time. There's people on the beach and wondering what the hell is he doing? I'm laying on my belly looking into the nothing but fog. My partner's looking at me thinking, why are you on the floor? You're going to ruin your camera. And I'm sat there wondering, can I see it? <laughs> can I see it? Is it there? And this has only come about because the ballers have argued against me and said, get down to the beach and do it. I would never have gone down the beach. I know that there's a load of atmospheric nonsense at the horizon. I can't account for it or explain it. And I don't know what's going on. But in my head, I thought, I'm not going to see that from the beach because ultimately, it's, it's on the horizon and I'm so low, there is atmospheric things going on at the horizon. None of us know what really is going on. We can all guess at it, we can look at it, we can interpret it our own way, but ultimately no one really knows. And in that respect, it's a bit like football. Everyone's got a view on it. And everyone is entitled to their view on it. And if you disagree with me, that's great. Tell me about it, we can talk about it. Who knows? As long as we all realise that it's not a ball, pretty much anything goes. So there's no rules on it either. I'm not going to dogmatically demand that everybody in the room accepts this as, 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 as some kind of authority, I'm not. But what I can say is you can all repeat it with a camera. Bit of time, bit of weather conditions in your favour, clarity, nice bit of weather. I mean, you could go for a holiday there for three or four days. Sit there and watch it, but you can all repeat it yourself. Can you do that with NASA stuff? Any of it? Not really. Can any of us go to space? No, I don't need to go on. But the point is, we can all do it. It's not that difficult to do, and most of us have a P900. So it's not been released to the general public yet. Tonight is the first time it's being seen publicly. Things that I'm going to talk to you through. Now, if you can see the floaty land, and you'll see it on the on the uh, composite in a sec. This is only it's only it's only possible because the Earth's flat. There you can see the mountain called North Baru. One particular ball, the protagonist argues that logic and reason is the standard of proof. I don't accept logic and reason. I accept the evidence. If we can see that land when we were expecting to see it and it's there, is that better or less than logic and reason? <laughs> it's proof. It's actual real world and you can all do it. That's what they tell us is the evidence for what we should accept to be true. Does that look like it's a ball? Yeah. Does it look like it's real? No. Does it look like somebody has made it up? Yeah. And nobody in this room accepts that that is real. Yes. I think Matthew Boylan broke this kind of up, didn't he? Yeah, Matt Boylan, is it, a, is it a painting or is it a photo? Do you actually understand that and look at his answer? You can in maths. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, six hours the maths, but you can do it. 
So is that, is that really what was going on here? Is this like maths is the proof of the world that we live in? Because maths works out if you make the sum. <laughs> well, I will owe you two apples. Yeah, you can owe me two apples, but I've still not got them. My actual point was, you can only do it in maths. You can't do it in the real world. Yeah. Which is essentially the whole point of this standard refraction nonsense that's based on a radius of the Earth that they can't prove. What can't for it? They can't prove it. That's me done for the evening. I'm going to hand you over to Nathan. It's a great deal more for me to say. That was absolutely fantastic, Anthony. Another round of applause for Anthony Riley. I know you can hear more from Anthony on my debate channel, which is Nathan Oakley 1980. We run daily at two, so check out Anthony and his uh, arguments with the ballers, which are extensive, I can assure you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Anthony. What's next? But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find out shortly. Over to Gary.